<laughs> Thanks. Good morning. Welcome to Let's Go Live with Jack Kelly. And my special guest star today is Tom Nogoyan. I think I screwed it up. We just practicing <laughs> that, right? All right. How do I do no that problem. again? Uh, yeah. Nogoyan. Nogoyan is good. Yeah. I think Nogoyan <laughs> sounds cooler now. Nogoyan. All right. We'll go with yeah. Tom. So yeah. what I'm trying to do for the, uh, for the audience is to bring people like yourself who are doing interesting things in the career space to make life better for job seekers, for people who are work, for employees, because we've had some LinkedIn lives recently where, Tom, I don't know how much you follow. It is here in the U.S. Dude, it is awful for job seekers, seriously. And for employees coming to 2024, you have everything from like, Google to, to 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 UPS to Discord to Twitch laying off people and it's and it's frightening because it's it's not like a, a year or so ago when you were having ten thousand a clip it's like a little hundred here two hundred there and so everybody's on pins and needles like am I next so like the vibe here is everyone's a little freaked out so I'm happy to bring up positive things and that's what I'm really excited to speak with you. Because what I understand, and then I'll turn it over to you, is that your company, your startup, is really trying to help people with hybrid companies to deal with, overcome the ice, you know, the, the loneliness crisis, to have social interactions, to, to, to have purpose to go into the office, to want to go in because there are cool things that are going on. Is that, is that right? Is that? That's exactly right. So we started Cafe almost four years ago and the mission is really to help people find their purpose in their like job career and to create a better like balance work-life integration integration and yeah i mean like it, it's really helping companies to to give a reason for people to, to give them a purpose to earn the commute and make sure that they are not just coming to show up and to be seen but actually they want to come in into the offices or co-working spaces or cafes and to get value out of this. So meeting new people, creating those connections, those like weak ties, strong ties, but actually just relationship and being able to, to create those connections, whether it's for work purposes, so like mentorship and just growing your career or other social purposes and just like meeting people from the yoga club or the chess club or whatever. And so it's interesting. So the name of your startup is Cafe. So not only because you live in Paris, but then also you'll be in San Francisco. So a cafe, I guess, it's more of when you're coming to an office through hybrid, you're looking forward to it because you're going to meet people, you can interact with people, you can have different social events and things like that. Is that, and you offer it as a SaaS, as a SaaS tech platform to a whole array of companies, right? Yeah, yeah. so we are a SaaS uh, product. And mm -hmm. the idea of Cafe was that like, it's the third place where you can have in the same place, mm -hmm. like both work-related topics and like just social extra work-related topics. So you can just hang out with your work besties or like having like a meeting with like, uh, like someone like your manager or something like one-to-one. -one. And, and that's just the place where things happen and that's just a yeah some some places that are alive and that are just like where you can have experiences and i think this is what the the workplace is about now it's like you don't go to work right you don't go to your cubicle mm -hmm. you go to have like an experience because you can get work done working from home so the idea of like moving my body to actually another place is like meeting with people having like some intention behind it. Like how do I create those relationships and connections? And we think this is what cafe is about. And what are some examples? So let's say I'm part of, you know, I work at a company that has a relationship with cafe. Is it like, maybe I know every Wednesday there's an esports thing. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm stoked that I'm going to go play, you know, you know, video games with my buddies and just just have a good time. So it's a reason to get me out the house and go to the office and look forward to it. Or having like affinity groups or different meetups. Is that kind of how it works? Yeah. So there's really 
two phase to this. Mm -hmm. um, there's one thing that's all about people. So the mm -hmm. idea is that you can coordinate with people that matters to you. So maybe teammates or your favorite people, and you can compare your schedule with theirs and to figure out what's the best day to show up based on their like calendar and agenda. Like when will I want to go to the office based on these people's schedule? So that's one part, the people part. And then there's the even part, like when is the best day to show up next week based on my ERG events, based on maybe like an interest group or a club event, or maybe based on my team meeting, because maybe I'm far from one specific department and we're having like a project kickoff or like a project postmortem, like celebration because the project is over, et cetera. The idea is just like highlighting when is the best day to show up and get the most value out of it, whether it's like professional, social, anything. And, and do you also do things outside of work where you have events where you, you know, it won't be in the office, but you'll say, Hey, we're going to have an event going, I don't know, for a marathon race or whatever. Do you do that too? Yeah, definitely. And also we're seeing this as a growing use cases across all of our customers. So more companies, especially in the U S are growing their workforce and be more distributed. So they are like hiring everywhere in the world and they're having what they call regional hubs. So mm -hmm. they have pocket of people, maybe like 50, 100, 150 people in some cities where they don't have offices, but they still want to like create those like meetups and gatherings, but they don't have any facility. And so they're using cafe to create events for people to actually get together and just huddle up and make sure that they're spending some time with folks from the same company, even not from the same uh, like department or team but just that share a common goal. That's the mission uh, of the company. And what are some of these events so that you have the different regions? Is there any commonality for events or each group may decide for themselves what they want to do? Yeah, it depends. You can either have like just group of, of people, employees, just organizing their own thing like that. That's a bottom up initiative. Mm -hmm. Um, like in a group of friends, there's always one person or like a group of people that just like are uh, pushing initiative, or you have some companies that have regional coordinators and they will have like dedicated people whose job is actually to organize those events and get people together. They, they are organizing those events most likely remotely because they're not even on site, but you still have someone from the company who is actually dedicated to get things happening. Now, what do you find out? Do, do you get data from your clients that show, hey, ever since we're using CAFE, there's more engagement, more productivity, you know, people are seem just happier and more motivated. Is, is that happening? Are you seeing that? Yeah, uh, we definitely do on three different di distinguished things. The first one is um, overall, like, we see a more attractive workplace. So people actually show up to their workplace without being forced because there's a, a whole thing that was the whole 223. It's everyone is talking about return to office mm -hmm. and mandates, right? And so uh, our customers are seeing up to like a 40% increase in their attendance without putting mandates. And we think that's one of the key. It's like, you don't want to force people. You want to attract them with the right value for them. So like workplace attractivity is, is a big one. And then there are, there's everything about communication and collaboration. So that's a link directly to productivity, mm -hmm. but like people using the product are actually reporting that they have a um, just easier way to meet with the right folks because they know in advance who will be on site. And they're also meeting with people like randomly. So there is a lot of like serendipitous meetup that actually happen using the platform because they're able to meet people outside of their group. And so that, that just creates more cohesion because um, it, it, it breaks down silo to go to an event with people you, you've never met from a different department and actually just creating those relationships. You know, you know, I really like what you're doing because the battle that, you, you know, at least here in the U.S., I can't speak to, you know, what's going on in Europe and other places, but I see here is you have a lot of these, and I, I don't, I'm, I'm going to generalize here, and it's because it's not fair to just, but I'm going to generalize. It seems like a lot of older boomer managers are just so used to, and I can't blame them. You know, they're, they're 40 years, you know, they're working in offices and just three years, it's like they're not. So 40 years still, it's a hard habit to break. 
And I think they're used to people being in their seats. And this is going to sound rude, but I don't mean to do it this way. But like they could patrol the halls and they're a big shot because they're a managing director or they're a you know, senior vice president. And they bark orders and everybody listens and everyone jumps to attention and they laugh at their stupid jokes. And, and those days are kind of gone. And I think they're fighting to get it back. This is a fighting to get back. But when they want to get you back, they don't give a reason why they don't give, you know, they, they don't say, okay, I would, I would respect them more if they said, Hey, listen, I'm used to, you know, being a manager for 30 years and this is hard for me to switch, but I'm going to try but instead they pretend like, no, I want everybody back. But like, you're one of the first guys that I'm talking to that actually came up with a solution to say, okay, if you're coming back, whether, and not even saying full-time, you know, all the time, but, you know, let's say hybrid or maybe full-time, but there's, you're trying to offer reasons why you come back that makes a commute worthwhile, right? Which to me seems that's the, like, it's so weird. Other companies aren't doing that. Like, what am I missing? Yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of normal, like a lot of people, whether it's like boomers or any, mm -hmm. any people in the in the company, they are used to the default option that office yeah. was, right? And, and it just takes time, like we are three years into this like new hybrid approach and just like new work arrangement. And, and a lot of people are talking about work locations, so offices versus home, but there's not that much of people talking about ways of working like we need to adapt our ways of working to just adapt to that new reality um and especially because you you can see a lot of studies and a lot of just data that is talking about that return to office push that that actually is usually um from ceos that don't really like care about like um the the sense of like belonging for their employees or, or just overall like flexibility and trust but people are looking for flexibility and, and that all the different studies from future forum to just um, all the different one, like I think Harvard business review also wrote a, a really interesting paper on this and, and the people who are the most comfortable in the office are actually the most senior, right? Like the, the, the youngest part of the workforce is having a hard time just figuring out all the codes and mm. how the office work and how do I get things out of it? Like, how do I grow my network, my career, my skills? And it needs to be just redesigned to address that office is not a beautiful option. So if I want to grow those things and I'm not five days a week in the office, how do I do? How do I meet new people? How do I make sure that I'm not missing out on the important stuff? And yeah, how do I get promoted eventually? So all those uh, different topics are really hard to address, but it needs to be just genuinely thought about. Like, how do I create something that works for everyone, not just for the most senior and the most junior, but actually for the whole like workforce of employees? Yeah, speaking of the future of work, have you kind of shared with some of your clients maybe like a four day work week or a flexible schedule. So let's say you have young children here in the States, childcare is so expensive. It's crazy. Like, so maybe where you could do, so, you know, something where you come in much later and then maybe you leave earlier, but work something out. Have you tried to experiment you know, to, to push the envelope a little bit and see, if the people who use your services are like, hmm, maybe this is something else you could try. I mean, I mean, we don't push for that. Like, we're not here to to consult our mm -hmm. uh, customers. Yeah. We help facilitate when it's necessary. So, for example, you can like within the, within our platform, people can say what are their preferences in terms of like working hours and contact methods to to make sure that it just respects their agenda. But yeah, overall, like this needs to be thought at a team level. So it's really team arrangement and it shouldn't be like organization wide. Like there's no one fits all model. So there's no way you can just hop on any company and say, let's go for a four day work week mm -hmm. and it's going to be working fine yeah. for everyone. It needs to be designed and um, yeah, just thought for every individual department and in order to work. Yeah. Tom, like. One of, one of the pain points that you mentioned 
and I hear this from people all the time, get so frustrated. You know, you come into the office. So what happens is, let's say I live in New Jersey, you commute in and it can easily take an hour, an hour and a half with, with traffic and all like the nonsense. So you go in, it takes an hour, hour and a half, you're there. And then you look around the office and you're like, Ghost town. son of a bitch, like all the people I need to work with aren't here. So I commuted in. We're in terror of my car or taking, you know, trans, you know, public transport and it costs a lot and you get in there and you're like, no one is there on your team. And so now you're doing visit video calls and sending emails where you could be doing it in your, you know, sweatpants at home. It's like, what the heck? Right. It's, it's so bizarre. Yeah. It, it costs a lot of energy, but also, and that's why we created cafe in the first place. Mm -hmm. You don't only come to an actual place to get work done to mm -hmm. only meet with your coworkers, like your teammates from the same squad or something you might be willing to actually show up to meet with other folks maybe there's someone from finance that you really like to hang out and mm -hmm. have lunch with maybe there's like a group of people from a specific interest group clubs erg maybe there is a specific happening um in the the, the company organization that's ha actually um having place on that specific day so like showing up to meet only with your coworker might not be the mm. best solution but there's also other plenty of other options that actually like is definitely making the commute worth it for you right. you just need to be aware of that i got a bit when you said e i'm not sure what is erg oh sorry so erg is employee resource group oh and okay. So what, I don't want to put you on the spot, but are there certain activities or social events that like is really cool that you could share? Like, Hey, this is really fun. This is really awesome that people are like, Whoa, sign me up for it. Yeah. Uh, we had one very interesting example of usage of events. So for example, there was like a, a town hall. So like mm -hmm. your all hands meeting with the whole company that happened both in person and virtually. So it was a hybrid meeting. It happened on a on a Thursday. It was a global event. Ten thousand employees were invited to that. Wow. So it's like the event for the semester, I think, or the quarter. And then this happened on a Thursday, and we got a group of employees actually creating another event on the day after that, so on Friday. That was called like the the post town hall meeting <laughs> picnic. And so people actually gathered and had like a, a large lunch together because they knew that a lot of people were going to be in town on Thursday. And so probably going to be here also on Friday. That was kind of like, kind of like the hangover uh, gathering. And we just figured out it's, it's a nice way for people to break the ice and, and hang out together and spend mm -hmm. time. And this is where the connection happened in a company. And this is where you can just create all the different bridges to fight for isolation but also fight for the different silos that happen within any organization. This is how you're creating all the flow and all the different ties across your organization. You, you know, and that makes sense on both sides because it's interesting. I've run a search firm, an executive search firm placing people on Wall Street for the last like 25 years. And I've noticed when I try to recruit somebody who is in, they have like a group, like a tight knit group, could be maybe just two or three people, it could be four people, what have you. But it, if you have that strong relationship because they're bonding and they do things together, like you said, it, it could be a picnic. It could be they go to you know a base, they go to baseball games together, football games, whatever it is. It is incrementally harder to recruit that person out because they're feeling disloyal, not disloyal to the company. They're feeling disloyal to their close knit group of work friends, so they'll stay. And if you want to leave, tr trust me on the first hand, you have to pay them so much more money to entice them to leave because they feel so guilty <laughs> leaving their friends. So you're so I think what you're saying too, I don't know if this is part of your sales pitch, but you could, you know, plagiarize what I'm saying is that part of it is by you creating these bonds, it makes people, you know, it, it helps with retention. And then it also helps with For recruitment sure. because they see people are staying there longer. If they're staying there longer, something got to be good. Why is everybody staying there and it's not a turnstile and everyone's leaving? So so that's, I think, right? That must be super helpful. Definitely. The, the sense 
of having all those connections, mm -hmm. especially across departments, increase the sense of belonging of employees yeah. towards the group, which is the small group of coworkers, but also the bigger group and the bigger picture of the organization. And sense of belonging has been proven to be linked to productivity and to overall engagement. So people are actually feeling like a higher sense of attachment to the group are more likely to deliver like more than they would actually to a company they don't really care about. Mm -hmm. and, and so creating those relationships and creating those connections or ha actually having a direct impact on productivity and retention. And so everything, like every prospect we're talking to all the time, we're just highlighting the fact that social cohesion is what you can call, like it's the glue between all the different like employees in your organization. And having that is actually the best way to like get people going to your company because they will see that mm -hmm. people actually matter one to another and to retain them. And so attracting and retaining talent is just one of the secret sauce or like one of the hacks that exists is just making sure people know why they belong here more mm -hmm. than to another company. Because with the rise of remote work, what happened is that you can do your work from any place for anyone. So let's say you're working for like a fast growing tech company, you have a nice salary and stuff, but if Google is going to be knocking at your door with 30% raise, for example, and they're going to, to, to ask you, mm -hmm. like, you can get that money boost, but doing the same tasks from the same chair, from the same office, which is your home. Well, you might think about it twice because like that raise is so mm -hmm. um, important. But if you really feel like, like you be belong to the first group in the first place, the first company, then there's nothing that you can really drop because you don't know if you're going to be finding the same thing um, in the other company. So it's definitely uh, a key factor for retention. This might sound weird, but part of the SaaS program that you have, uh, do you, if let's say a person is not attending different events, they're not showing up, is there, do you send out like micro, you know, surveys or feedback to see, hey, what's up? Because that could be also for companies, a good way to spot, is this person looking to leave? You know, they're not, they're not going to any affinity groups. They're not going to these picnics. They're not going to the town hall. So yeah. is there, is there a, a methodology to say, wait, hmm, Jack is not responding to a lot of them. Either he's busy or maybe he's just looking for another job. Maybe we got to you know, talk to them. Is, is, is that part of the system or no? Yeah, we, we have a, an organizational network mm -hmm. that we're able to leverage just to understand how close are people or how distant are people from one another and from the whole organization. So if you think about one organization, so each employee is a node. And so you have islands, right? Like you have a big island and then within the island, you have like small different groups mm -hmm. of people, some pockets with bridges. And, and you, can, you can easily spot someone that's like just moving away from like his group and moving away from the whole uh, like big, um, big node. And so having that data is definitely helpful to find out the red flags into someone that maybe it's not just like feeling well because like for example anyone can have like personal issue mm -hmm. and just not be in the best mood but also figuring out like someone is getting disengaged from the last month last two months and and yeah that definitely is helpful to to managers to understand if someone is actually just moving like out yeah. if i could if you don't mind if we could pivot just for a little bit because part of what we do is try to help people now with their careers and and you know how you can succeed and move forward in your career now you're you're a relatively young guy uh you're 30 under 30 for forbes right and how did you can you maybe share with the audience like what was your journey like what made you decide to say hey i'm going to do a startup with my brother and how is it behind the scenes because this is what i like doing like for people like to pull back the curtain like, what's the, if you don't mind, like the reality, the good, no the bad, the ugly, like, what is it like where from the day you like, cause it, right. You start with your older brother, right? Like, Hey, let's do it from, from there to like, 
how was it? Was it up and down? Was it straight up? Were times like you guys were just punching each other in the face because you couldn't take each other anymore? <laughs> like, how, 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 did, how did it all play out? Yeah, I mean, we were working in the same company, my brother and I, when COVID hit. So we were both manager uh, when we got the first lockdown. And then when we met that first problem, like we could go back to the office, but we had no clue what was the best day. And this mm -hmm. is how we came up with our initial problem, which is like coordination of schedule in a hybrid arrangement work model. And so we started with like a spreadsheet, like all companies we've been talking to at the same time back in the day. So like three years uh, and a half um, ago. And then we figured out it's really difficult for like you and I to catch up at the office. If we were both one day per week, mm -hmm. there's like a very small chance that we're going to be meeting. And eventually there's a high chance that we've, we're never going to meet anymore for a lifetime. And so we felt like, like this is going to be defi definitely a, a big topic for HR. Um, just because like, we are sure of one thing, like we are in love with remote because we love the comfort and just overall, like the fact that we, um, take over our like productivity and, and just like overall agenda. But at the same time, we're sure that we need to feed from each other in terms of creativity and collaboration. Like we're social creators, which is like, like to hang out with other folks. And, and this is how it happened. So my brother and I were like, we're going to be seeing each other less than before. So we need to make the best out of it. But how, like, how do we optimize for that in real life connection? Uh, and it's, it's not, it's not easy, right? It, it's difficult. And so you need to be intentional and you need to make sure that every seconds count and to make sure that people are actually showing up on the right days for them. So you might want to go in the office for different reasons than I do. Maybe you want to go there because you have kids and you want to have like some quiet time on Wednesday or something. And maybe I want to go there because I want to hang out with a lot of people that I just like, like to learn from maybe for extra professional matter. Maybe I'm into gardening or something. Right. And so this is how cafe really, um, was created. We, we just like iterated and just asked people, why do you want to go to the office and why do you want to stay working remotely and, and try to balance this every day? And so on the other, on the other part of your question, like building a company with his brother is, is difficult. <laughs> like siblings, siblings working together, I think is great when it's working. It's not for everyone. That's uh, what I, I do recommend to a lot of founders. Like don't go right into it if you're not sure. For Arthur and I, it was, it was pretty clear. Like we, we've been knowing each other for about 30 years. So we've, we've, we've passed through the whole thing, like beating each other up because we're not like, we were disagreeing a lot of things. And I would just add like a smooth communication. We know each other. We know when the other one is like upset or concerned and just trying to balance like feelings and stuff. And yeah, like it, it's been a great journey with a lot of ups and downs, like any entrepreneur. But it's been it's been definitely a great, great journey, a roller coaster journey. It, it, if you don't mind me asking, where were you both working? At? Like, what company? Uh, it was a startup in, in Paris that was um, building a podcast application. Oh, huh. so so it was a podcast. So this is different, you know, than what you're doing with a podcast application. But were there some? similarities like are you the tech guy like how yeah. did you break it up between you and your brother like are you the coder and the software developer or is your brother that or how like how how do you work that aspect out to say okay you know so for the audience here right and even myself just to understand it so okay we're figuring hey i have an idea it's covid and get back to the office hmm, this sounds really interesting this could work but then how do you find the talent to start building something, to build the, yeah. you know, build the product. So there are a lot of similarities actually, because we were always working into B2C mobile applications. So mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in a previous life, I, I founded a, um, a social network, uh, like it was like seven, six years ago. And so we took all the similarities from like social network, B2C mobile application, into building something in B2B in HR tech, but actually 
any employee can be a user. So we get that like product driven uh, thinking of like, I want to build something that I would love to use as a user, as a manager, as an employee, as anyone. And so we applied like, what do I want to have as a product and try to build this? And then talking to a lot of uh, other folks. Um, and yeah, so my, my brother and I were both um, initially software engineers. Uh, so we graduated in, into that. And so he was in charge of all the building and I was in charge of like talking to user, understanding what to build, designing the quick mockups and just like launch it and get more feedback and just iter iterating very quickly. So that was, yes, like a lot of iteration with uh, uh, very, very, very short timeframes. Like at some point every week, we were releasing two, three to four version of our product. Like it was like non nonstop mm -hmm. back and forth trying to understand what to build. So you started right away. So this wasn't your first foray into a startup. You, you said about six years ago, you started a first one, right? Was, was that? Yeah. And so you were pretty young then, right? Early twenties, I imagine. Yeah, 23. Actually. 23? And what made you yeah. start? So like at 23, were you still in college or you just graduated and you're like, hey, I want to be an entrepreneur? Just graduated. And that was kind of just like a side project with friends from from school. Mm -hmm. And we started like a, an app one weekend and it just took off. And it was like a B2C platform uh, for um, for teenagers. It was like a um, feedback, anonymous feedback platform uh, plugged into Snapchat and Instagram back in 2017. Um, and yeah, we got cool. immediate traction. So yeah. what, what happened? Is that still around or did it get acquired? No, nah, we killed it because it was really difficult to find a way to just monetize it. Like mm. it, it was really difficult back then. But yeah, I mean, we learned tons of stuff. That was great. See, that's a really, really interesting thing from speaking to people like yourself. You know, I feel that a lot of folks who see people who are successful, they just view them as, you know, boom, rocket ship, everything goes straight up. But when nah. I speak to people, whether entrepreneurs or just people in their careers, it's not like that at all, right? It's like up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and then crashing down, <laughs> right? It's not, it's not so easy, right? It's, it's a, a lot of stress, a lot of, you know, Job seekers have a lot, but entrepreneurs have built the same thing, right? Stress, anxiety, is it going to work, not work? Middle of the night, something breaks. How do we fix it? Oh, yeah. Our customers are mad. You need, you need to be resilient. I, I yeah. think that's the the biggest quality that an entrepreneur can have. It's mm. like, like you will think like maybe twice a day, maybe twice a week, maybe twice a month that it's the end of your company or that you cracked it. Like you have the secret code and like you're just on the right path. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's always that, it's always yeah. that. Like you need you to be resilient always. Do you still feel that way even now? Where it's like yeah, days, sure. like, oh no, I don't know, <laughs> are we, we going to make it? And other days you're like, you know what? We're going to be the biggest thing ever. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, even like any kind of company, I think even like companies post like series A, series B, series C, at some point, I think it definitely got to stop because eventually you're like an IPO company or something. It's just like, it's an established company, right? But until then, it's from like a very early stage to maybe Series B, you're always like, are we going to make it? Even if you're like a profitable company, you never know. Like you, you've started our conversation with all the layoffs and stuff. Like the, the generative AI just mm -hmm. like, like, suddenly came up and a lot of companies are rethinking their cost structure and overall like workforce model. And yeah, like I think you never know. It's, it's part of the, of the journey. You need to embrace it. So for, if you were to give advice to people who are thinking of like, Hey, I'm tired of this corporate rat race. I can't take it anymore. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to start something. I know you, you mentioned about something that you know about and you're passionate about. Would that be maybe the first thing or what would be the first thing that people should do before they make that leap? Wow. You need to love what you're going to solve. Like, okay. you really need to be passionate about the problem that you want to crack. 
because this will be breakfast, lunch, dinner for the next three to six years, probably. Like even like a lot of uh, young entrepreneurs are like, yeah, but I can just like bootstrap, grow super quickly and then exit and sell this to another company. Yes, maybe that's possible. Mm -hmm. That exists. Like if some folks have done that, but still like you, you're going to be acquired and then still work a, a bit into that. And, and, and this is the whole industry you're going to be working on. So for example, I'm not saying that if you're building a healthcare startup, you're going to be in healthcare your whole life, but probably in the next decade or maybe like five to six years. So you don't want to, to pick like random IVs that you think you can make money out of. You really need to love what you're going to be building and the space and the industry because this will stick for a long time. You know, it's weird. So do you have to love it or does it, you do it and then you're successful and then you love it afterwards? Is there a difference or you feel like you really have to love it to start, to start it and get it up and, and running? I mean, this is the biggest difference between like a freelance and like an entrepreneur, like freelance can work on any topic. They're just like getting paid at the end of the month. And, and like, yeah, they just charge you. But when you're an entrepreneur, I think that like, you cannot do things that you're not passionate about. So for example, in our case, I won't, I won't lie to you and say, oh, I was passionate with HR when we first started. We didn't knew that we we're passionate with UX, so user experience, and and so in the end, employee experience. Like we are employees, we are managers. We want to build something that we would have loved to mm -hmm. have, right? And so we were not passionate with HR. We we're passionate with employee experience, which is for some people the same thing, but probably not. And and I think you don't even know. You just need to be really hungry for something that I want to solve this. And whatever industry it is, I want to be dedicated to this for the next X years. But a lot of people are just like trying things that they, they are not sure they can, they can just stay consistent and resilient for a good amount of years, which is, to be honest, at least three to five, I guess. So what, what you need Minimum. For people to start, one of the things is that you have to really have a passion for it. You have to love that problem you want to crack and solve. And that's that's going to kind of give you that fire in the belly and that drive to keep going, especially when things are tough. Because if you don't have that passion and that interest and love for it, it I guess it's just too easy to say, F it, I'm, I'm piecing out. I just It's not worth it. It's just too much aggravation. Can, yeah, can, I share, sure. and, can, I share, can I share something for the opposite side here? It's, so I'll make it short. I, uh, I, started, I started my search company basically because I was a loser and I failed at a lot of different things. And I, I, I was a partner at a search firm and I wanted to do my own thing and build it, right? I was not passionate about the people who I was placing. It's not that I didn't like them or anything. You know, there were certain kind of people on Wall Street, you know, certain niche yeah, they were fine, good people, everything, but it wasn't like, oh my God, I love this area. But once I started making money, because when you place somebody as an executive recruiter, usually the fees, and I'm, I'm giving inside secrets to everybody here. So like, so, so <laughs> if, if people are curious, like how it goes with recruiters, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm an open book. I'm tell, I, I, this is part of the whole allure of doing these LinkedIn is just to be very honest with things. So you get paid about 20, 25%, maybe even 30% of the base annual salary of the person you place. And if you're placing people who are making 100, 200, $300,000, that's a lot of money. So that's when I became passionate about recruiting. Well, I'm like, holy shit, I can make this kind of money? Like, like who makes this kind of money? Drug dealers, you know, you know, professional athletes. Then I was passionate because then I was like, wow, I can actually make money, dude. This is crazy. And then that's so... I wasn't like, I was passionate. I had to do something, but then afterwards, when you succeed, then you feel even more passionate about it. Does that make sense? It's no, almost that like- sense. That makes sense, uh, for, for sure. I mean, I think this is also maybe a, a biased version mm -hmm. of, uh, it, it's, it's also like having a long-term vision for like a, a company mm -hmm. and making like billions, not millions, it needs twice as much as resilience and, and just to, mm -hmm. to hustle really, really hard. 
and and also like like you need to give that like fire to your like first employees and and, and like everyone that you will be hiring starting from there mm-hmm. and so it, it's maybe a bit different from one activity to another um but yeah it's it's definitely key to me i think to to be passionate maybe maybe i'm wrong like i'm not saying like this is like right and true for for everyone but yeah building something that is bigger than you uh is actually really hard i guess if you're not passionate about what you're actually doing doing in the first place yeah it and you mentioned billions i i don't mean to pry but like is that the goal like do you and your brother and now your team do you feel that hey we're going to take this this is going to be a unicorn company one day or what do, what do you for feel? sure yeah for sure it, it, it's a billion dollar opportunity like the the market we're in is actually so it's employee engagement and so it's everything mm-hmm. from attracting talent retaining talent and get the most productive talent that actually are having everything to succeed so there is everything in that industry to to be made so for example you can think of anything from teams and and slack that are actually helping communication and productivity that's a big chunk but actually all organization using those platforms are actually able to use cafe to leverage like all of our assets to drive engagement in both offices and remote locations or regional hubs, et cetera. So that's definitely the goal. So that's awesome. So you see the scalability, if it keeps commute, if it keeps going this way, where you have this hybrid setup or some remote, some hybrid, even if people going full-time in the office, the services you offer the engagement, the productivity, the able to, you know, attract and, and, and recruit people, you know, that all fits in together. So those are all the themes, you know, that are working and, and every company needs to, you know, do what you're doing. So, so you could, so I guess in a way it's endless to kind of keep growing, huh? And it's, it's just linked to everything that we're seeing right now in the Mm -hmm. market. So, all the companies you've been like hearing the big one saying like we're requiring everyone back to the office but actually it's not working because what's happening is yeah. that you have like the facade with like the communication like that big company required five days a week but in the end what actually happens if you're really like having insider tips it's not what's uh putting in place so so actually you have the like outside communication and the internal what's going on and and there is almost no company with like a full office mandate for 100 percent of the workforce. Mm-hmm. That's just communication. And at the same time, there is very small amount of companies with like a fully remote policy for 100 percent of the mm-hmm. workforce too. So like what's happening is that in the end, hybrid work is about, I don't know, 90, 95 percent of the market, which means that hybrid work arrangement, and there is a lot of sub version of hybrid, right? Don't get me wrong. But these organizations need to actually create um, just a place where people feel like they belong, they want to stay, and they're giving their better self actually into collaboration and productivity. Mm-hmm. And this is where we are making the difference. Well, that's great. And, and, and for people who are interested, who are saying to themselves, damn it, I want that for my company. That sounds cool. But, you know, that would get me, you know, I want to get out of the house more and this gives me a reason to get out and go to the office. How can people, you know, find you or how does it work? Because they, they would go to you and then you could you, in turn find the companies, you know, how, how would that work if people wanted to say, hey, I, I want to do this for my company. I want to tell my boss about it. So how can they find yeah. you and how can they get that information out there? They can reach out to our team. So mm-hmm. we have everything social, so LinkedIn, Twitter, mm-hmm. and we have our own website with like demo requests and, and stuff. So we are called app.cafe, so like the cafe. And uh, yeah, anyone can reach out and we'll ha- we're happy to just give them a, a tour of what we can do. And yeah, that's it. It's as simple as that. Well, that's great. I really appreciate you taking the time and I know it's I probably could. now about almost six o'clock for you. So it's dinner time in, in Paris and you're going to be enjoying your, you know, your cafe at a cafe. And 
So, and, and, and again, like when we started this conversation, I love the fact that we could bring guests on who are just trying to th make things better because and probably same thing where you are in Europe or you see in San Francisco, like yeah. there's so much anger, there's so much like hate, there's so much division. And I figure like you got to more people who are trying to make it better and you're trying to make it better. You're trying to bring people together. That's so important. And, you know, help with this loneliness crisis and then also make people like socialize more because we're, you know, it's, it's, it's unraveling. So I like the fact that your business and, and good for you, you're making money, you're doing well and everyone wins. And then for the people who are coming in, they have better, you know, they enjoy going to work more so than before, and they're more engaged. And the company's like that because they're going to have more engaged, productive workers. So it's one of those things where it's just a positive. And, and we need more of this kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm always seeking out. If you ever hear any other, you know, you ever, have, you ever have other startups that have interesting stories too, hit me up and I'll bring them on as well. Because I, I want to... I want to counteract all the like negativity, all the hate, all the misery you know, out there and, and replace it with good, positive things and people doing really good things. So if you know anybody too, definitely send them my way and I'll be glad to speak For with sure. them and bring them on. But meanwhile, congrats on everything. I'm, I'm glad you're, you seem like a really nice guy. I love when nice guys succeed or nice women succeed, but anyone to succeed. And I'm glad it's going really well and growing. And yeah, did, keep in touch with us. Let us know how it goes. And maybe, you know, six months later, let's see all kinds of new stuff you're doing and we'll keep in touch. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. I will definitely do that. And and yeah, thank you again for having me. It was a oh, great conversation, great chat. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Tom. Have a good night. Take care, my friend. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.